Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 17. Now, let me make a remark here as we begin that I don't know everything. Never said I knew everything. And what we're going to look at here is, I don't know. But I'm going to tell you, I do know it's a scam. What these women are doing. And God tells us it's a scam. And there are scams running around today with fortune tellers and, and, and seances and psychics. It's a scam. God does not approve of it. It says, Likewise thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, Jewish, Hebrew, Hebrew women. Ezekiel is a priest, like Jeremiah was a priest, and the priests are the Levites and they're Hebrews. Which prophesy, oh, that's interesting, they, you know, this year a famous person is going to get married. This year somebody's going to die, that's an important. Out of their own heart, not mind, no, his heart. And prophesy thou against them. Okay, they prophesy falsely. Ezekiel prophesy against them. And say, thus saith the Lord God. Woe. And when the Bible means woe, it means stop. To the women. That sow pills to all, all armholes. I have no idea. They're the pillow. And they're putting in the armholes of, 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 of garments. To make kerchiefs upon the head of every statue to hunt souls. Now that kerchief, you go to Acts, book of Acts, chapter 19, verse number, I can't read, 12 I think. Acts 19, 12, talking about Paul, verse 11, so that from the body were brought upon onto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out from them. So when we run back to Ezekiel 13, there is something with handkerchiefs and evil spirits. Scripture with Scripture. It says to make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature. Not statue. Don't read that wrong. And it's kind of interesting because stature is the natural height of an animal body. It's more generally used for the human body according to Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Animal body? Uh, 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 uh. If you were to ask me and ask my assumption, and then I'm nobody, I would probably say a cow, a moo, an ox. But it does not say statue. It's kind of weird. Holy Spirit puts that. Again, I don't know. Will ye hunt the souls of my people? So what they're doing is something that has to do with dead people. And, you know, if you pay me, their souls will... Well, the Catholic Church says, you light candles and pray for the dead. And pay your priest and pay your church. Well, we can help you get the souls out of purgatory. The Mormons are about, when you get involved with, with genealogies... And you're paying people to do genealogy. One of the sources that you're doing is the Mormon church. And as for the fact is, if we can trace your ancestors, you can be able to pay your their way out of whatever the Mormon church believes of, of a purgatory the Catholics believe. 
That's what a lot of that genealogy is that Paul warns Timothy, and I believe he warns Titus, don't get involved with those genealogy because the genealogy searches, I can get my lost family out of whatever damnation they're in, a purgatory. And here it is now, the souls of my people, the souls of my people will be the dead. And will save the souls alive that come unto you. So we're looking at something involved with death. And will you pollute me, God, among my people, the Hebrews, the Jewish people, for a handful of barley? That's how much they were charging. And for pieces of bread. Give me some barley, give me some bread, and I'll get your loved ones out of... Now, you want to look at Scripture with Scripture again to see for the fact that, well, I don't understand a passage in the Bible, and I'm going to run to another man. I'm going to run to a commentary. No, 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 no. For this one, look at Proverbs. Look, look at this remark in Proverbs. Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6, 26. And you read this, and you read this, and you read this, and... Uh, Scripture with Scripture. And with Scripture with Scripture, we see the context. And we're not going to another man. We're going to the Bible. We're going to the King James Bible. We must go to the King James Bible because other modern Bibles twist, change, add, and subtract from the Scriptures. And you lose the cross-reference. The major problem of modern Bibles is you lose the cross any cross-reference to Mark 16 that is not in the modern Bible. But look at here. Verse, chapter 6, verse 26. By means of a whorish woman, uh -oh, a man is brought to a piece of bread. That's the price over here in Ezekiel. So these cross-references are going on in the time of Solomon. Solomon would know because he had multiple wives with multiple gods. So when you come back to Ezekiel, we've got cross-reference. We've got horse women. We've got women involved with, with, with a religion and sex. That's the Corinth city. The Vastil virgins in Corinth, you know, you, you go to the, the temple in Corinth and, and you worship the God in Corinth and you, you have sexual relations with the, the virgins of that. That goes on with the, with the, with the Catholic priests and the nuns. Don't, come on, man. Let's get real. So for Ezekiel 13, 19, for the handfuls of barley for pieces of bread, that runs back to Proverbs. To slay the souls that should not die. Souls that don't die, that would be the devils. Devils don't die. The fallen angels don't die. They will be cast in outer darkness with, with Lucifer called Satan who has fell. They don't die. So we are in the realm of evil, wicked angels of Satan. We are in the realm of death. And if you bring barley and pieces of, of, of bread, we'll give you a treat or a trick. As King Saul went and dressed up the night to be to the witch of Endor. And everything of King Saul's life was against God. And you see Halloween. Listen, if you go with the scripture, the scripture is going to kick your gods. Church history, Hebrew history will go against your gods. And if you don't like it, you're going to be mad at me. You're going to get mad at the true Bible preacher because you have been kicked in your anus. I didn't say ass. Because you are involved in wickedness. It's against God. 
Now watch what else he said. Slay the souls that should not die. To save the souls alive that should not live. So we're looking at dead people. And they're saying, you know, people who died, they die, that's it. And if you want them to go to heaven, you want them to have evil, we can take care of that for you. It's wicked. And look what God said. By your lying, they're lying, to my people, the Hebrews, that hear your lie. So everything involved in what we just read with these pillows and these souls and, and dead angels and life and death, and they're lying. And they're prophesying out of their heart. Well, we can get Uncle Joe out of... See, that's a prophecy. I had a, I had a, a Christian get up and before at a podium telling, telling, the, telling the church, well, there, there are no prophets today. Well, you don't witness. You don't tell people about Jesus. Well, what do you mean? I prophesied all the time. If you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ... You will go to heaven. Jesus Christ is coming back. There's seven years tribulation. There's the Antichrist. There's the market. That's all prophecy. Now, I may not be a prophet where God's going to speak to me, but yes, God speaks to me through the word of God. If you're not a prophet, you're not reading the Bible. You're not witnessing. These people are lying. And there are people believing their lies as the Catholic Church. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord. <clears throat> and when God speaks, Behold, I am against your pillows, whatever that is. And I'm telling you the truth, but when I look and study it, I don't see this in history. The commentators don't even see it. So I would imagine, and I'm not going to go look it up, but I would imagine the modern Bibles, the NIV, the, the RS, all them, of the of the tree of the Alexandrian dead roots. I guarantee those Bibles don't read what we're reading. What are they? They're pillows. And you believe that? Yep, I believe it. Something with armholes. Wherefore ye there hunt the souls to make them fly. <laughs> okay, make it more complicated, Lord. Explain it. I can't. I'm not going to, and I'm not going to give you any personal opinions what I believe, because what I believe is not important. It's what the Word of God says. And I'm not going to do a modern Bible. I'm not going to change it. Make, look how special I am. No. Take it as it is. I will tear them from your arms. So what would you get from that? We know that the Babylonian army is going to come into Jerusalem. Jeremiah said it. Ezekiel said it. So what do you take from what we just read? The Babylonian army is going to come and they're going to take these people and they're going to rip the pillows off their arms. Now, let me make a suggestion here. And I'm just going to say something. I'm going to throw it out there. You can do what you want. You can pray about it. There are women who wear shirts and blouses and dresses and they've got pads on their shoulders. Right by the armholes. Uh oh. I pray about it. Here it is. And you don't even know why you do it. Isn't it amazing? 2021, there are women walking around in, 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 in Baptist churches or the King James Bible or anybody, and, and, and they got something. That go, uh, I don't understand Ezekiel 13. I don't understand the Old Testament. Uh, what about the pads on your outfit? You understand. Now, the fly, 
and will let those souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly, fly up into heaven. That's what everybody said. Fly, I mean, it's a lot better than dropping down to hell. Your kerchiefs also will I tear and deliver my people, the Hebrews, out of your hand. And they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And it's quite interesting because I said you don't see this today. Now, again, like I said, the Catholic Church, you pay your way, candles and all that, purgatory. But I don't see this practice of, and maybe, maybe there is going on. But God says, I'm going to destroy it. And it looks like it has been totally destroyed. But there are fragments. And what the Baptist Church, what the Baptist Catholic Church doesn't realize today is your worship of Resurrection Sunday, which is actually Easter, Esther, there are fragments. And when you got outside your church, you got the egg hunt for the little children to have fun. You got the boobies of Esther in her statue. You got fragments. And your Christmas celebration, you've got fragments of Tammuz. It may not all be there. Oh, it's not. Yeah, I know. You don't study the history. I like it. Well, I like it. It's a sin in many cases. Because with your with because with lies. But your curses will I tear and deliver my people out of your hand. Lies, they shall no more be in the hand to be hunted. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. That's number 15. And I said, we're going to hopefully get them all that this I am the Lord. And what I am the Lord is these women who have these pillows involved in the depth. God said, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy what you're doing. And you should know I'm the Lord. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. And when we find out, when we study, I am the Lord, there's a serious consequence of, I am the Lord, that you should know that. And some of the people that you should know, I am the Lord, that we've seen already, are in hell burning today. <laughs> Too late. Too late. Well, you hear about, well, you know, you shouldn't drink and drive. You shouldn't drink and drive. And the go, guy goes out and, and, and gets involved drinking and driving and gets in an accident. Oh, now you know the cut too late. Because, verse 22, with lies. Notice how God keeps saying lies, 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 lies. You have made the heart of the righteous sad. So there are people in Jerusalem, they are righteous. Look at that. There are people who are doing right, and these women are causing those people to be sad. How completely? I don't know. But they're involved with dead relatives. A failure of lies whom I have not made sad. You know, there are psychics who will promise you everything when it don't happen. That brings sad. There are people who go to a healing ministry. I'm going to get healed and they don't get healed. That brings sadness. And God says, I didn't do it. You did it. You Listen, these psychics and these healing ministries and all that, they're going to stand before a holy and righteous God and give an account of their lives and strengthen the hands of the wicked. So instead of the righteous getting, get, they're, they're taking the wicked and making the wicked feel better, making the wicked, the wicked get, get right and making the wicked feel, hey, hey. And the righteous... They're going the other way. 
And what would you see for this for this verse would be for the fact that calling evil good and good evil. That's the same principle. And that's going on in America today. The wicked are being promoted. And the righteous are. I heard today, I was told today, a man spoke the truth and he lost his job. I speak, well, I haven't done because of my health, but when I was at the farmer's market, I speak the truth, I get the cops called on me. I had the cops one time tell me, he says, listen, you know, we're too busy to be coming here for you every time. Don't go. You are here for a man that's preaching Jesus. Well, you know, you're too loud, you're upset. And how many other wicked crimes could you be with right now? That he should not return from his wicked way, but promise him life. They are telling the wicked, hey, you're okay, you're right, go ahead. Our judicial system does that. Our judicial system says, oh, no, he has a right to a phone call. He has a right to a lawyer if he can't afford one. He has a right to be, you know, all the luxuries. And there are luxuries in the correctional system where you get, you get security, you get uh, uh, heating, air conditioning, you get a meal, you get shower, you get clothing. What does the victim get? In our system of America today, and many preachers will disagree with me, we promote crime. When I, I come from I come from New London County, Connecticut. We had for a while we had a rampage of bank robberies. And it stunned the cops. I don't know how many there were, but there were a lot of bank robberies. And when they finally caught the woman, she was asked, how did you get away with it all? She goes, oh, I went to prison, and I talked to other prisoners, and we, we compared notes, and we compared things, and I learned how to do a better job. And there are actually people in the correctional system learning how to do more and worse crimes. Therefore, ye shall see no more vanity, emptiness, nothing. That's what vanity means. Nor divine divinations. God's going to put an end to it. In New Jerusalem, you won't see psychics. You won't see psychic night. You won't see a palm readings. I love it because we have we used to have well we have here, but I used to when I was able to walk and I we have a place here and there, there was a psychic booth. I popped my head in. You know, I'm, you know, I was coming. Get out of here! For I will deliver my people, the Jews, out of your hand. God is going to free His people from these liars. God is going to free His Christians. Of all the lies and vanity of the world by taking us home and bringing us to New Jerusalem. And what we'll find in New Jerusalem is what, not what we'll find here. We're not going to find the, the, the political crap of lies and everything. We're not going to have the news media. We're not going to have the threats. We're going to get the truth and nothing but the truth for all eternity. God is going to relieve us of vanity and of liars and his people. And again, number 16. Ye shall know that I am the Lord. When Israel one day will sit in the millennium with Jesus Christ as the king, there will be no prophets. There's no prophecy in that time. You don't need, there he is. You will not have the seances. You will not have the psychics. You will not have the liars. And if you do dare, if there's a lie in the millennium, man, you've got the Christian 
who will be part, put in charge of the cities, who will report back to the 12 apostles, who will report to David, probably, and who David will report to Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ finds you guilty, he'll go tell you to jump in the lake, and there's a burning fire lake in the millennium about the Dead Sea area. <laughs> That the fact is for the Jews and when they're completely relieved of all the vanities, all the lies and all their sins and God washes away their sins and gives them a new heart and God's spirit is in them. You should know I'm the Lord. Ah, oh, there's Jesus. He is the Messiah. That's a good I am. You should know I'm the Lord. And for us Christians, when we dwell in the, uh, New Jerusalem, He shall wipe away our tears and give us. We have a brand new. We shall know that He's the Lord. And at this point, a uh, uh, chapter of uh, thirteen, verse twenty-three, ye shall know I am the Lord. There's no more faith. Faith is gone. If I die today, and I'm going to die or get raptured, but if I were to die today, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, that moment I'm with Jesus. No more faith. There he is. That moment I die, I'm absent from this body and present with the Lord. I know he's the Lord. Faith is gone. When I get in New Jerusalem, faith, okay, I believe in New Jerusalem, I'm in it, I don't need to believe it no more. There it is. The moment that God finally wipes away our tears, the Bible says it's going to wipe away, I believe it right now, I, I, I don't see it, but the day that God, okay, faith is gone, that's done. In the eternal life of the Hebrews, of the Christians, and the Gentiles, New heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem, faith is gone. Because there it all is. We shall know that the Lord is the Lord. I am the Lord. And those who are in hell, those in the lake of fire, they know he's the Lord too. Do you realize the moment that a man, a lost man dies and goes into the, into the gates of hell forever, He's a Bible believer. He's a King James Bible believer in hell. He's not going to believe the NIV. The moment a Christian dies and goes to glory before the Lord, he's a Bible believer. A King James Bible believer. Go to a graveyard. I have. Everyone in a graveyard, whatever graveyard or cemetery you visit, they're all Bible believers. King James. They all believe in heaven or they all believe in hell, but they do believe in God. Any atheist in the cemetery is no longer an atheist. They shall know that I am the Lord, saved or lost. That last one right there, what we're studying, number 16, is a saved Jew. You should know I'm the Lord because I clean up the nonsense, the sins, the wickedness. And by me doing that, who else could do it? It's that plain and simple. 